In this episode of Restore It, I'm going to restore this Omal Universal Money Checker from the 1960s that was created by Omal Office Machinery Limited in London, England. This set of balance scales were used in the 1960s and 70s to count loose change prior to the invention of digital coin counters. Once the scale is calibrated, you can place the included weights on one side and place matching loose coins on the other. When the plates balance, you quickly know how much coin you have. I also found out that they were used for counting paper currency, which I'm going to guess had their own weights to go with them. This style of scale was used in many bank branches across the UK and America, but became obsolete when the new high-speed counters were introduced. Before we get going with the restoration, I want to quickly try it out to see how it works. Well, it doesn't look like it works very well at all. It seems to get stuck on one side about 90% of the time. Even with the weights on, it's getting stuck. So there's definitely something to look into there, even if it's just a lack of grease. Now you've seen it in action, it's time to dismantle it completely. But before I get on with that, I just want to quickly talk about today's sponsor. Let's get checked. Are you the man your father was? Well, recent studies have shown that men's testosterone levels are dropping and have been dropping substantially since the 1980s, at about an average of 1% per year. So if you think about how old your dad was when he was born, if he was 40 for example, your testosterone levels could have dropped 40% lower than his. Low testosterone can cause all sorts of problems, most of which you would never attribute to your levels being low. If your testosterone is low, amongst other things, you can lose muscle mass in your body, feel depressed for seemingly no reason, and things like your mood, memory, and even sex drive can be affected. Let's get checked on the number one choice for at-home testing kits, and their male hormone test kits allow you to easily test your testosterone levels all from the comfort of your own home. Low testosterone is more common the older you get, but as the studies have shown, it can affect men of any age. So to see if you're running low on testosterone, click the link at the top of the description and order your testing kit today. Your kit will be delivered in discreet packaging and will be sent next day delivery. Once your sample arrives in the laboratory, confidential results will be available from your secure account within two to five days. It's as easy as that. So big thanks to Let's Get Checked for sponsoring this episode. Let's get back to the money checker. So first things first, I need to remove this little thumb screw to be able to remove the top casing.
There's more to it than meets the eye on this one. So much so I haven't properly dismantled all of it. But don't worry, I will eventually. As you can see, some of these bits are in fine condition, protected over the years by the case, and others are rusty and in need of new coatings. I'm pretty sure this thing was left out in the rain at some point in its life. So now we've had a good look at all of the bits, let's shot blast the bits that need blasting. With all of the old paint and rust removed, I can now shine the pieces I'm going to electroplate on the wire wheel. This will help the chrome and zinc coatings appear more shiny. With those done and resting in the cleaner, I'm going to grind down any high spots on the main casing and fill the dents and scratches. Before I can do that though, I need to pull these tiny rivets that held the old plaque in place.
For some reason, this is the only shot of me sanding down the filler I got. And there we go, all ready for paint. I'm going to first add two coats of etching primer. This will help prevent rust and also add an additional layer of build and protection. Whilst that's drying, I'm going to start the long process of chrome and zinc plating all of the metal bits that aren't painted. With that doing its thing, I'm heading back into the spray booth to add two coats of high build primer, which I'll flatten with 600 grit sanding pads. Whilst the primer is curing under the infrared lamp, the first of the chrome pieces are ready to pull out. These still need to be polished with metal polish to get that deep reflective shine, but they'll have to cure for at least one day before I can do that. Now the primer is completely dry, I can sand it down with 600 grit soft pads that will help with the curves and the round edges. Before I paint these, I need to remove any dust or contaminants from the surface. I'm using quartz silicon remover as it does just that. I'm using this hammerite paint to achieve that classic hammered look. It's a bit of a strange paint as the effect starts to appear about 30 seconds after you put it down. The only annoying thing is that the paint will drip ever so slightly when applied vertically. So once the first coat was down, I had to paint the one side that was facing up at a time and wait 4 hours for each coat to dry. An absolute nightmare if you want to get it done in good time.
Once each side was done and the effect was even, they started to look really nice. Moving on to the many smaller pieces that hold these scales together, it's really just a case of cleaning and polishing. I almost forgot about this little cylinder that holds the hydraulic fluid. I quickly removed the paint and added two coats of the new stuff. The little plastic window at the front has definitely seen better days and could do with getting replaced. I offered it up to a fresh sheet of matching thickness and cut a new one out. There's only one thing left to do now and that's to polish all of the newly plated pieces. And there we have it, every piece restored or replaced. On a quick side note, at this point I haven't done any of the weights or received the stickers I need to finish the job. They'll get done towards the end of the reassembly. I was having a bit of trouble with my chrome plating setup, but I managed to get there in the end and it's amazing what that Unipol metal polish can do. Truly not a sponsor, but that metal polish is the best stuff I've ever used. So now it's time to rebuild this thing. Quite a daunting task if taken on all at once. So what I'm going to do is build up all of the smaller pieces first before I think about rebuilding this thing as a whole. Starting with this little hydraulic dampening thing.
For any parts that required lubricating, I used this Zep Amber Pro Lube that's perfect for the job.
Well, that was one hell of a reassembly. There's so much that goes into something so analogue like this. I love it. I just want to give a big shout out to Creative Penguin and especially Zach for helping me out on the design and printing of these stickers. These guys are now my go-to place for anything to do with printing and you'll be seeing a lot more of them and their work in the near future. I got quite lucky on this plaque. The person who sold me the money checker had another one in pieces and offered to sell me the plaque from that one to replace the one from mine which was obviously in terrible condition. All that's left to do now is add the stickers to the case and finish the weights. With the plaque firmly in place, I can now focus on the weights. Some of these were zinc plated and some were chrome plated, but like I say, my chrome plater was playing up a bit and they didn't turn out exactly as I would like them to. and with the stickers applied, that finishes this restoration. I'm quite pleased with how this turned out, as I was uncertain about the paint for some time. I'm also glad the sticking issue seems to have gone, so I think a lack of grease was the culprit. So that about does it for this one folks, thanks very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did restoring it, I look forward to seeing you again in the next one, bye for now.